a very cool video. Actually, this video idea came from one of you guys. I got this email from Daniel Brown, who goes by Debro, and he said that he's a 33-year-old UK music composer, producer, and he's been producing in Logic since 20. 10 and he was wondering if I could break down his logic file and I thought that's such a cool idea for two reasons one I'm forever a student so I can learn so much from you guys sending me your logic projects and two I'll love teaching and I'll tell you how I would reorganize it or what I would do differently this is his um band camp if you guys are interested Daniel Brown and let's jump right into it here is the project this is the project that was sent to me so hopefully this is what he was expecting to be sent for me um sometimes when things get transferred over they are a little strange so we'll keep that in mind like for instance like these instruments are completely blank so whenever i get a project like this and there's no instruments i always just like check that it wasn't hidden it's not so i don't know if they just like this got deleted but for now I'm just going to clean this up. And okay, so whenever there's a big project like this without even listening to the to the music yet, um I like to be as organized as possible. So, first thing I like to do is like make sure that I have my marker set up. And I like to break up the markers in increments of 4 bars which most of his things are broken up in four bars so you can easily see them. So I just will do, just go here and then just cut. So you can just go very quick. Because my scissor tool is on the right mouse clicker, I can just use right mouse clicker. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go through very, very quickly and break it up in four bar increments. Four bars is a very good breakdown for me because I know when I'm making my songs, I want something to either be added or taken away every two to four bars. So it's a really good visual representation to have four bar markers. But because this is a different genre, I'm just going to kind of break it up into like bigger sections. I can kind of see. So I know this seems to be some sort of like transition period. So I'm just going to type, type that in here just for now. Transition. And then what I can do is I can just do shift and hold these down just to save some time and then hold down option and then just move this over here. And then I'll just quickly do another four, four bar increments of these markers. Then what I would do, I would take out the signature, would take out the arrangement tools and I would color code these. So depending on your breakdowns option C, I would turn this in, like let's say this is the intro, I would do the intro for red for each of these. Let's say this is like another section, I would color code this section, make that the same color. And then if this is a transition, I would color code that. And then maybe this is like a chorus, let's just say a chorus. And I would go through and type all of this out. Yeah, and then if I just wanna keep these all the same colors, you can hold down shift and click. And then let's say the chorus blue or whatever that color is teal. So I basically do this for the whole song because this is like my blueprint and it'll make it so much easier to see when I'm like down here to be like, oh, we're in the chorus, you know? And that's really helpful. Then I'll go through and you see how like this says Steinway Grand Piano. So this region says Steinway, Steinway Grand Piano, but the, the track name is actually Fairy Tale Pianos. So what I'll do is I'll press Command A to select all of those. Watch very carefully. When I press Shift Option N, it's gonna actually change all of these region names to the track label names check it out shift option and bam changed all these names so now it says fairytale bells fairytale bells and that's just going to be a lot easier to read as i'm going through everything now what i would do is i would go through and like especially since there's so much going on i mean we have 123 tracks i would go through and color code each of the like types of instruments right so like all of like the keys Let's say this is all the keys. I would color code these, option C. Let's say these are all blue, right? There's even more keys, I think. These are kind of bells. So then I would do bells, 
I would color code all the bells like pink effects in a different spot. Yes, yeah, so I would probably put like all the wind instruments together. Yeah, you see how this piano is down here? So I would put the piano, I would put every, all the same types of instruments kind of like together and then color code them. So it was, e it's easier for me to see what's what. We can make that red. Okay, so these are the base. We can just leave the effects in green, but I basically go through and color code everything. So now the markers should be all organized. Everything is all organized and it's just a lot easier to see like what's happening. You can even go through the drums more and do like percussion and drums. So like this is like percussion. So let's just say option C. We'll make them like a lighter pink. Okay, now let's listen and see what else I would do. So also another thing when I get a track, I always check out like what's going on with the automation because this is important to see, even though we can't visualize. I just wanna make sure, okay, this is what's happening here. And honestly, I don't add automation until like the last final touch. Let's take a listen to what's going on. What a resolve. What a journey we went on. I feel like this was like a story to be told. I feel like I watched an opera. Anyways, let's talk about it. Okay, a lot of really cool ideas, musical ideas. I'm going to start off by saying that this is not the kind of genre of music that I make, but if I was digging for critiques, the two main things that I would say to focus on is filling up the sonic spectrum. So what do I mean by that? When we're looking at like the EQ, we want to fill up like this space and that's how like sounds sound full instead of sounding thin. So a classic band does that, right? Drums, they fill up the sonic spectrum because we'll have like hats here and like snare here well the hats will kind of like over come over here then there's a snare then there's the kick so that fills up the sonic spectrum so even sometimes if you just listen to like a kit that that's filling up the rhythmic spectrum then we have the bass which will fill up harmonically over here then you can have a guitar which fills up the mids or the keys which fills up the mids and then if you had like some sort of like Pianos or guitars can also get to the top, but this would be a great area at the highs here for like a flute or some bells or whatnot. And then you could layer it to thicken up the sound with pads. Those are kind of like in the background or Foley, right? So it could even be like my favorite Foley sounds is if like, let's pull up. I don't know if it's called Foley, maybe Soundscape. You can check out some of the sounds here Like even just having sounds like that in the background, especially like this area here where it sounds like very thin, let's listen. You can hear it in the background, right? Like now without it, right? It's so subtle just hearing that soundscape, but that soundscape like fills up the space, right? You can even make soundscape with, that's another thing that I feel like I'm missing here is like some organic sounds, right? And that's where like fo Foley sounds really cool. So like, for instance, let's pull up like something organic like vinyl. Just so you can see, let's just like throw some like vinyl somewhere. 
just to add like some texture. See, this is why the markers would be really good. If I did it throughout the whole song, I'd be able to see down here. This might not be the right sound I'm looking for, but. Or even just like wind, let's see. You can hear it, right? So just even that kind of bit just like fills up a little bit more of the space and the sound. Um, okay, so then the other thing that I would recommend is like a little bit more transitions. And what I mean by that, and you have some of them where like things will stop, like full stop is like a transition. Let's show an example of like, for example, what I'm talking about. So here. Like let's say we found like a riser can't find a riser that you like, you can always do a little trick. Cymbal. Yeah, cymbal swell. Let's put that at the bottom here. And then I would do like, like something like that here. It doesn't have to be that sound. Something else you can try is like a sonic boom. Yeah. And sometimes I like to like layer these. Another thing you can do is you can actually like stretch Sometimes it doesn't work right from there for some reason. Let's see. If you do control B, just bounce that in place. And then you hold down Alt, you can actually stretch the sound. We could delete this one. And then we could stretch hold down Alt or Option, you can stretch the sound. Let's see how it sounds. <laughs> Anyways, you have to finesse all this stuff. So the main things that I would focus on are filling up the sonic spectrum with different sound choices and adding some soundscapes, adding some transitions like the risers or an impact to introduce new sections. And I would focus on organization using the marker tools and color coding the regions and also making sure that the, the names are the same on the inside as the outside. But thank you so much for sharing your track with me. I hope this was helpful. I really enjoyed listening to your track. If anyone else wants me to critique their Logic project, let me know in the comments and I'll send you instructions how to send me your Logic project. I really hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you guys connect with each other in the comments. We are all musicians on this channel. So thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time.